Emil Carvalho is showing me his well in Kurtori village. Tell us about it, Emil. Oh, wow. How deep? These are 25 rings I counted. I don't know, is that one hand, one hand? Yeah, each one is one hand. So is it 25? About 12 inches. 12, yeah, 12 no, inches into 12. More than 12. That's more than 12. That's about a foot and a half it looks so like. So tell us the story of this well. You re 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 resuscitated it when you came back two years back? Yes, we came here and I think one of the first things we did, we thought we needed was water. And this it's well, at a height, no? Yeah, and this well existed uh, since the house wasn't lived in for over 100 years. Uh, 100 years? Yes. Uh, lived in. All the migration to Bombay. Migration, yeah, migration to Bombay. Not Bombay. Uh, uh, Burma. 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 And from Burma to Bombay to Pune to everywhere else. Uh, so uh, this well existed, and but it was filled with, I think it was used with mud and glass and things like that. So we got it cleaned. Uh, How many trucks? How many truckloads of mud inside? Truckloads. And glass. How many but, workers? Uh, there were four, and they worked for about ten days. Ten days. Ten days. Uh, and uh, finally, at the end of ten days, they reached a, a wooden base, which they did. I think that was what they did initially. In uh, the old days. In the old days, they put a wooden base bottom. They said Why? It's Teak? Well, yeah, I think it's teak. I don't, I don't know. That's what they told me. But what wood they used, I'm not uncertain because I haven't looked at it. But I think it's probably also to maintain the integrity of the base of the... You know, the koso keeps hitting down. Okay. Probably because of that also when they were drawing up not to pull up mud and all from wow. down. Maybe that that's the reason they put that wooden base. And then the first summer, we got about a foot, say a meter of water, but the first summer the water dried. But after that, the well hasn't dried. In fact, it comes up to uh, about 20, 15 lines, 15 I see. lines of water get filled up. So quite a lot of water comes in. I see. And any time in the monsoon, it gets full? Full. It can, it, no, it doesn't come right okay. to the top, but yeah. you have sufficient. Since we are elevated, so we are up, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of water coming in. This is Kurtori, no? Which vado? Uh, Rumborde. Rumborde. So it, is, it was a learning process about... But and what would be the cost, if you don't mind me asking, to just to get it back in shape? Because I think it's it cost me around twenty-five thousand. I see. Twenty-five. A very good person from uh, Lotoli, Araujo. Into yeah. wells. Into wells. He do, he's into a lot of things, but he, one of the things he does is clean wells. So he, in fact, he contacted me this year saying, "Listen, let's clean the well." Uh, but I said I delayed it because uh, wall had broken down, so I was yeah. stuck into that. But, and then uh, the cyclone came and all that. Cyclone came, it could have been done, but I, I did not. I, I, in fact, we should be using more, I put a uh, submersible pump into it. So water gets pumped from there into our overhead tank. Water tastes delicious, huh? Water is good. Water tastes different here from the cities. Our water tastes different. And different from the other villages yeah. also. Very the, different. How old is the home? Home, this part of it, uh, I, actually this is the original house you can see both yeah. sides of it it's, yeah. I think the kitchen was here because the well is here the kitchen was here so this they say this the plinth in the in the hall is over 500 years 500 old. years old and the family this what Deepika family said at some point uh, uh, people two people died a brother and I think sister died of TB one after the other so what the family did is they opened the roof and they moved into the other side of the house. Really? I think they rebuilt the house and they left this house because that was the only way to I see. disinfect the... I see. Yes. So this was lying unused till uh, Deepika's grandfather came in 1929 and started rebuilding it. Uh, but nobody stayed here, I think, subsequent to that because they were in Burma and then they went to Pune because education was much better for the That's children. That's a story of Goan migration, no? For children, the education was much better. And then uh, 1989, Deepika's mother came and... She put up the grills and doors and did a plastering. Amazing, did a lot yeah. of work. But then again, they had to move out. Came, no, people came and went, and we were always in the cities, you know. Yeah. So it never. And then so finally, after many generations moving back. 2019. It was like I mean, it's what it's like these nine, nine, nine. We've come. 2019. <laughs> we all decided to relocate here, and make made it our home, and it's worked nicely. I Small, mean, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And you are contributing to the village. Yeah, and it works so, so <clears> well. I mean, we learned new skills. That is the main thing, you know, coming here, coming from the city, if we came in with blinkers on and say, oh, this is what we want in the city, we have these, 
uh, yeah. this kind of connectivity, this kind of uh, food, uh, I want all that I get in a city, then it would be impossible to live here. But if I feel people are flexible and say, there is a lot of opportunity to learn, learn new skills, you learn gardening, learn to do drip irrigation, learn to keep bees. Uh, you have bees, so you have bees also. Yeah, so, so many th different uh, skills that can be learned. Your original field is? I'm a, I'm a mech mechanical engineer who specializes in food process engineering. Wow. Amazing. But at the heart, I'm a baker. I worked in the bakery industry for over 30 years. Cool. So I'm a baker. Fantastic. I didn't know that when we were talking about bread earlier. I should be careful what I say. About bread, bread. We were no, no, bread is a very contentious topic. It is a underestimated food. We undervalue it. Uh, is because we undervalue it as we treat it so badly and that's why the quality is, you know, deteriorated so badly. Uh, we as consumers expect to get cheap bread, say we want to only pay X amount, 4 rupees or 5 rupees or whatever. Mm. Actually that bread, to make that bread takes the baker 5-6 hours at least, you know. Any other product 5-6 hours, uh, a chocolate mousse, I can make, uh, we can make a chocolate mousse in half an hour. Okay, and we will price it at 50 rupees. A baker puts so much effort to make a bread at six hours, and he, in fact, he gets up in the morning and he will quibble and say, look, we're not going to pay you more than four rupees. You know, that there has to be, and because of that, it's very difficult for a baker to make ends meet. Costs of, everything is going up. If diesel goes up, that is the transportation cost. Everything else is going up. Oh, yeah, food cost, flour, yeah. sugar. Everything is going up. Uh, Gas, employees' yeah, wages, yeah, yeah. based on that diesel, because they have to go out and buy vegetables. So uh, he, the, the baker struggles. The baker really struggles to make ends meet, and that's why it's a dying industry. And we do not uh, see the long rec picture. Recognize long yeah. it as a as an as a any other thing. We would say it's an art. It's a craft. Yeah. We do not recognize it. We say you know we undervalue it, and uh, because we undervalue it, is the the quality of bread is deteriorated. People just make it money out of it. They don't take pride in what they're doing. So what's the way forward? Value-added bread? Value-added bread. Even this bread, the bread we are currently been making in Goa is very is good bread. I mean, like I said, there are three, there are words we use: wood-fired, uh, stone-baked, hand craft bakery. These words are used in a product in Bombay. I can sell it for 20, 15 rupees, 20 rupees. Here we don't, you know, it's the same product. I can put it right or wrong. This is a key word. It's wood fired, I say in Bombay. People will go crazy. <laughs> right? Here we have three wood fired ovens in our, in our own village and we do not realize the value Label of the product that's yeah. coming out yeah. of it. You know, so we need somehow to rethink. I felt there are two, three things. Government should, hospitality is big in Goa. They have a lot of these five stars and all that. They should force the five star that 50% of your product you source locally, bread. You go for your local baker and you buy 50% of the product. But on the other hand, the government has to ensure that the local baker maintains a standard. You know, support them, up their skills and all that. What happens in that is that if 50, it becomes like the bread, I say bread bottom, it supports the bakery. Then he can do value addition. He can do something else with his bakery and do other products and that becomes the butter for the bakery, you know. You are talking just, about using the oven for many hours. Uh, yeah, you using the oven, <coughs> you utilize, you f one fires the oven, it costs money to fire an oven. Once it's hot, then you need to keep putting product in and taking out. So you don't restrict ourselves only to bread, you restrict it. You can do cakes, you can do bakes, you can do pies, you can, like other things, roast chicken, fish, you know, baked fish, so many things that can be done in an oven, so many, so many, there's so much possibility, especially during feasts and festivals and Goa, so many of them. If a baker builds his name up uh, with good food, you know, say I'm doing an excellent roast chicken, people will come source from far, you know, you, uh, Salset, you can go book your thing and have a delivery system for roast chicken True. coming to your house, wood-fired roast chicken. I think there's a lot of letang. Uh, uh, how many people are doing letang nowadays, people? No good pigling, then you don't have to sell the whole pig. You can cut it into roast and give people roast. And there's a lot to be done with food, but uh, the baker needs support. It needs direction. I think that also the baker is to blame. We've not upped our skills. 
we have worked blind and this is how 500 years 400 yeah, years we are going to work. with the same bread and yes, so we not recipe. understood the science of baking also you know now we gone our forefathers used to use toddy that was sado that was sado that was sado my dad tells me i remember in the 40s we were raided by excise why because they had we had to have big troughs in the bakery where there was hops and it was fermenting overnight which bakery this is american express bakery okay you all ran it the family my family is uh, okay. we are the from the fourth generation in that karwalos karwalos so we were my dad used to say they got raided by excise because he, he thought they were brewing alcohol during but, prohibition time no in prohibition time but that was hops for the uh for bakery the, for the bakery it, like it was sado you mix the thing and you fermented your bread and that was what was sado actually it's just that we've lost our skill here now everybody says sado and they price the bread at 250 bucks very fashionable <laughs> it becomes fashionable and i say listen it's ridiculous i can make this bread at quarter the cost yeah you know and uh, but we need to assist our baker a lot of our bakeries uh, they talk about sado sado but uh, we need to you got to hand on your shirt you are his photo it's on this thing <laughs> that comes so that's how it's been but bakery is a it's a it's a it's a one of those tough line in food you know other it, it is a, you are at the bottom of the food food chain, chain. because even the peer staff you get to work work, work in the bakery at the bottom of the food line okay you no know, so it's a big okay. challenge you're not like getting oh skill people okay. coming in your bakery you will like get bottom of the food line it's a tough job it's uh, you working 2 o'clock in the night 3 o'clock in the night because you need fresh bread in the morning uh, you need to meet your orders things like that food is hospitality is like that but i think bakery is tougher than the most but there is a science involved which we have forgotten our forefathers knew knew no food and you know frederick slow tastes better slowly made like you said half an hour to stir the thing even bread it's same thing a slow ferment why it's not the yeast it's the bacteria that has to work on the bread on the flour is the bacteria that breaks down the sugars and the proteins and all that we can taste otherwise we are not tasting the actual uh, the the sugars are too complex for us to taste but when we slow the process down and do say 3 hours 6 hours we make it 24 hours the bread tastes much better and the other thing i realized you do a bread like one does a bread like that one gives it shelf life by itself the bread automatically you know one doesn't need to add additives don't have to add calcium propionate or anything to the bread the bread automatically gets shelf life in fact the bread tastes better second day and third day i see yeah it's surprising i make stolen mean. for you uh, during christmas i made a stolen and you just use a pre ferment and it's a yeasted bread which with a pre ferment stolen comes from Which Germany, part? Germany, and uh, uh, with ma actually with marzipan inside, but it's just the bread. The bread tastes better second, third day. It is excellent. The bread, again with a glass of wine, it's perfect. I'll give you some of the biscotti we made. Okay, that's a bribe. On that point, we will definitely. Uh, I, I mean, thank you, thank you. But thank you. But thank you. I mean, it's fascinating. But thank you for sharing and downloading so much information in this short I spell. We started off with a well and ended with bread. With bread and food. <laughs> thank so you. Everything always comes back to food. Of course, why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs>